Hi everyone, this is Janos from Class, and this is my quick tutorial on how to use InDesign to create your layouts. Um, so I'm using InDesign CS3, it's the version that I've got, but all of these features should be available just in any version of, of Adobe InDesign. So this tutorial should span across CS4 and CS5. I'm just behind and cheap since I won't buy the new one. Okay, so I'm going to come and create a document here. So I want a new document, and... Uh, you can see the number of pages that I can set up here right away. So I know I'm going to do a two-page comic for class. Facing pages. That means, do I want it to look like a booklet, or do I just want it to be a single page at a time? Um, since it's easier to work without facing pages, because um, the booklets cause problems for printers and all sorts of other things, all sorts of other reasons, it's easier that you click off the facing pages feature, um, because we'll be working one panel at a time, uh, one page at a time. Sorry, not one panel. Um, I don't need a master text frame yet. Uh, my page size is going to be letter size, which is great. That's exactly what I need. Um, and that's what this relates to. So this is the size um, of a letter page. And it's in portrait mode instead of landscape. So I can switch between the two and you see that the values switch. Um, the number of columns I want in my document. Um, this won't print, but this will help, help uh, function as a guide so I can adjust the gutter. So if I want really big spaces between my, uh, my columns or if I want thinner ones. Since I want to do a simple nine panel layout for my first page, I'm going to uh, select three columns because th these will run the full length of my page. And these are my top and bottom margins. So this is just the sort of default space that you want to leave between uh, the, the top and the bottom when it prints out. So that's fine, I'll just leave that as is. And I'm going to hit, oh, oh, if I want to see more options in case you want, you were curious, bleed and slug, that's for printing, but we won't need those. So we'll just use the, uh, the, these default features uh, and the ones that we've adjusted. Okay, click okay. On my document, you see I've got my three column grid here, um, or my three column layout. Um, the next thing is that if I do want to see the document grid, that's also available to me. So I come up here to view, and when you come down to grids and guides, you can show the document grid. And here we go. I can see where my grid is within my document. So if I have a uh, you know, very specific uh, layout that I want to follow within a certain grid, or I can also even create my own guidelines in here if I want. Um, by dragging from the top. So here I've already got my vertical grid, so now I can create my horizontal grid. Um, but uh, I'm going to do that with boxes instead of uh, creating it with, uh, with guidelines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my rectangle frame tool. You can see as I hover my cursor over it, you'll see the name of the tool and also the letter F. Uh, that corresponds to its keyboard shortcut. So by clicking the letter F, I get there. Um, now to explain some of the other tools that are available to us here, this is the direct selection tool. So if you just want to select an object within a page, that's the tool you want. Uh, or sorry, that's the basic selection tool. The direct selection tool selects objects within a frame. So if you have a picture inside of a frame, which we'll see in just a minute, um, you can select that picture and slide it around to, uh, to adjust your framing. And I have my pen tool, my type tool. So this type tool creates text boxes. So I can create a box here and I can start typing away. Um, but we don't need that yet. We're just going to create a frame. We are not worried about text right now. I'm just going to create I want to create my layout. So I know I want nine panels in my comic. So I'm going to create a box. And I need to figure out the height since I know already know I have my width. Um, and the easy way is to copy the same box over and over again. So I can either copy it by selecting copy and paste, um, so which is also command C and command V. So command C for copy, command V for paste. It's also in my right-hand menu, so if I ever uh, forget what my keyboard shortcut is, it's always right here. Um, another quick way of doing uh, selecting the same object or multiplying the same object in, in, in design is by clicking on the object and then holding down the Alt tool until I see a double triangle, and that means that it's going to clone whatever object I've got. So there I've got an exact copy of my box and another exact copy of my rectangle. So now you see I'm a little bit over my page size, so that's a little bit too big. So we're going to shrink that. So I'm just going to click on this, and when I put my cursor in between here, I can move my box up and down and make it longer or shorter. 
So same with all of these selection points. This will warp it out. And if I hold down shift, it'll stay in its ratio that it was originally. So even if I go over, it'll flip over to the other side. That's how well this tool works. All right, so we'll stop there. I'm gonna see how many I can fit into my column. I think I should be able to fit my three here. Okay, yep, I can. But now I've got irregular spaces. How do I make these spaces work uh, uniform? If I want uniform spaces, since I know I have three boxes that are all the same size, I can come use the Align tool to do that for me. You can see I've already got it here on my desktop. Um, I've pulled it out of this panel. Um, that can be tucked back in here. And you can see that there it is, the Align tool in the side. I'm gonna pull that out because I'm gonna need that. And I want these aligned by the bottom. So since I'm gonna align everything based on this uh, bottom most edge. Okay, so then I come over here, see where there's multiple objects. So distribute the bottom edges and boom, my edges are all uniform. The spacing between my edges is uniform now. So now I wanna copy this because I want multiple copies of this. Wait, it, does it look like that's off? We can also use the align tool to align these boxes so that way they're all aligned on the same space so I align to the right hand edge and I can adjust this as well if I want to align my boxes to the page I al switch my alignment to the page and there it is aligned to the page okay so let's go back to selection because I may need that again and this way it's easier to remember which one I'm, I just left myself on and the line to selection is more common than a line to page so I could copy and paste this or I can also use my cloning technique here by holding down alt and dragging over. There we go. So I've got my six and now I have nine. Great. So now I have nine panels on my one eight and a half by 11 page. And there we go. We can save this by going to file, save as, or command shift, save as, and I'm going to drop this in a folder that I've already got here, or actually, I can just drop it straight to my desktop because that might be easier. Um, actually, you know what? I'll put it in this class. So I already have a folder for this class. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to call this nine panels. Okay, so I'm saving my document. 